Welcome to module 35 of Point Set Topology Part 1. We shall continue our study of connectedness. So far, things were not all that uh, difficult. But now we are trying to take you a little deeper into connectivity. Here is a result that can be used to prove connectivity of a big class of interesting spaces. So let us formally make a definition here. Once again, this is for namesake only. Take any set theoretic function f from x to y. For every y inside y, look at all points which are coming to y, all points of x which coming to y, namely f inverse of y. That will be called the fiber of f over y. What are the fibers of f? They are all inverse images of some point in y. For example, if you take a point y, there is no point which is going to that point, f inverse of y may be empty. So then I will say fiber of y at that point is empty. So that is also allowed. Okay, it's purely set theoretic notion. There is no other condition on F. The word fiber is used in many higher mathematics. I am used to that. That is why I am putting that terminology here. Okay. So everywhere fiber occurs, you can just write F inverse of Y for some Y inside the codomain. Then you don't have to use this fiber word. All right. Let f from x to y be any quotient map now in particular the surjective okay suppose y is connected and all the fibers of f are also connected namely i am writing it uh, just for your sake f inverse of y for every y is connected they are all connected then Conclusion is X is connected. You see, what we have seen earlier is that if X is connected, then Fy is connected. Therefore, in a quotient, if it's a quotient map, Fy is whole, F of X is whole of Y. So, if X is connected, F of X is connected, Fx equal to Y, so Y is connected. We are looking at converse here. Y is connected, you don't immediately conclude x is connected but if the fibers are all connected so there is an extra condition then you can do the other way around x is connected okay so it is quite a profound result but the proof is very easy here all that i do is take a separation instead of a b i have called a a1 a2 doesn't matter huh? take a separation of x Look at all points bi, all points of y below. Okay, so there are points of y such that the fiber over that point is contained inside ai. Okay, it, bi. I am just defining it. That is that is my bi. This bi is a subset of y. So this I do for both i equal to one and two. Okay, as such, you know, BIs could be empty, they could be anything, right? But here I am using two things, namely, F is surjective, and then it's actually a quotient map, and the fibers are all connected. So, together, these things will imply, first of all, all these BIs are non empty. B1 union B2 is the whole space X. That is comes that comes from the surjectivity. And sorry, before that, each F inverse of each point, namely the F fiber, 
being connected must be inside a one or in a two. Therefore, a one union a two will be the whole of x. Okay. What we claim is this: this b one b two, b one b two union is the whole of x, right? Because each f inverse of y is contained in either a one and a two. So union of all f inverse of y is the whole of x. Therefore, y will be union of b one and b two. Okay. What we want to show is this is. Now we started with y as a connected space. This is a partition. This is a separation. That will be a contradiction. If a one is non-empty, f of a one will come to something. It must be either b one or b two. It has to be inside b one. Similarly, f of a point in a two will have to be inside b two. So b one and b two are non-empty. Okay. Now. Why b one is closed? B one inverse f inverse of b one. Sorry, f inverse of b one is nothing but the entire of a one. And to begin with, we start a one and a two are closed subsets. Inverse image of a closed of a set is closed implies the corresponding set is closed in the quotient topology in this quotient map. Therefore, both B one and B two are closed. Clearly, a fiber cannot be both B one and B two. It has to be in one of them, right? So, B one intersection B two has to be empty. So, all this show that B one B two is a separation for Y, and that's a contradiction. Why the contradiction? Because we started with a Wrong assumption that X is a separation. Okay, as an immediate corollary, we get a big theorem here. Take any finitely many connected spaces and then take their product that is connected. How do we uh, do this? Do it by for two at a time. Then by induction it will follow for any finite product, right? For two at a time, how do you do? Look at x connected, y connected. Look at x cross y to y, the projection map. Or you can take x cross y to x also, no problem. That projection map is an open map. Any open surjective map is a quotient map. So you can apply the previous theorem. To this quotient map, y is connected. What are the fibers of y? Fix a y. All points x comma y coming to y is nothing but x cross singleton y, which are all homeomorphic to x. Therefore, each fiber is connected because I start with the assumption that both x and y are connected. So theorem says that the product is connected. Once you have proved it for Two by induction, it will be true for all finitely many product. The above theorem, together with this corollary, it's an easy corollary. Okay, sometimes you have to directly use corollary. Sometimes you may have to go back to the original theorem. That will be very useful in proving connectivity of a large number of topological spaces. So that is what we will we will do now, namely, what are called as the general linear groups, the orthogonal groups, the unitary groups, and so on. They are all inside n cross n matrices. So let us uh, make a formal introduction to these uh, these things, which are very uh, important in mathematics in the in the central mathematics. Look at, of course, my k is any field you be to begin with, but finally when you talk about topology and so on, I am taking k as either real numbers or complex numbers. Okay, remember that. So this notation m. 
n cross m k denote the set of all n cross m matrices with entries in k. Clearly, under entry-wise addition and multiplication, it is a vector space of dimension n m over k. This is part of your linear algebra. Therefore, by choosing an appropriate and convenient basis, we can identify this vector space with k power nm, the Cartesian coordinate space, because the dimension is nm. Okay, there are many different ways of doing it. For example, you may write the rows of A, A as, see, there are N rows and M columns, okay? So each M row, N row, M, uh, uh, the one single row is a vector inside C power M, K power M. So write it, the next row in, to the, you know, on the side of, in the, on the right of that and so on, instead of writing the below. So write them side by side so that it will look like a nm order to pull. For example, if you have 2 by 2, then you will get a, a 4 vector. Okay, a 2 vector followed by a 2 vector, so you get a 4 vector and so on. So that will give you an identification of this vector space with k power nm, okay, it just uh, depends upon which way you want to write, any of them will be as good as any other one, so you better choose according to your convenience, that's why convenient and appropriate, appropriate to the context, but you should keep in mind that your original space has a matrix structure for many other purposes. So in order to rely, in order to remind you that instead of writing KMN here, KNM here, NM, MN, once you write 5 into 3 as 15, it is lost. 5 and 15 could be 1 into 15 also. So you write it as N cross M. So this is just a reminder that it is an uh, n cross m matrix okay this notation is used it's a very clever notation it's not mine it is there in the literature instead of kmn you write kmn the, as a as a euclidean space they will be both same as a vector space they are the same okay as matrices this will be different than k1 cross nm or nm cross 1 and many other possibilities Various subsets of M and K are of interest in higher mathematics. Now, if this notation M and K stands for N cross N, okay. So instead of writing two of them, I am just writing N, that means they are square matrices. Here are a few of them. I am giving you definition of that. Look at all square matrices of size N such that the determinant is not equal to zero. It's the same thing as all those which are invertible. The SON is inside now RN. Okay, RN cross RN cross RN and so on. RN cross N, N cross N matrices with real entries such that A, A transpose identity and determinant of A is 1. If you don't put this condition, determinant of A, then this is called ON, orthogonal group. So this is a special orthogonal group. Okay. UN is all those complex N cross N matrices such that A, A star is identity. Okay. Here also you can have another one, SUN wherein you put one extra condition, determinant of A equal to 1 here. Okay, I am trying to give you only a few of them here, but I just told you two more also here. Note that the first one, GLNK, is an open subset of 
के एंड क्रॉस एन और ऑल मैट्रिस वाई इट्स गिवन बाय डिटर्मिनेंट ऑफ ए नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो जस्ट मीन्स दैट इनवर्स इमेज ऑफ द फंक्शन डिटर्मिनेंट विच इज ए पोलिनॉमल फंक्शन ओके सो दैर फोर ऑल दो पॉइंट विच आर यू नो डिटर्मिनेंट इज ए फंक्शन इन टू के राइट के इज आईदर सी और आर सो नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो मीन्स दैट इज एन ओपन सेट सो इट्स इनवर्स इमेज ऑफ दैट ओपन सेट ओके सो दिस इज एन ओपन सेट वेर एज फॉर सिमिलर रीजन एस एन so this is an equation that is an equation it's not an equa in equation okay so n and u n they are closed subsets of m n m n k s i r c or r here this notation is a transpose and this is a star is conjugate transport okay so i claimed that our previous theorem along with the corollary about finite products can be used to prove that all these three here at least and then many more are all connected spaces so let me present a proof of one of them the first one okay when k is c i am taking the gl and c okay If you take GL and R, then you are to be dangerous. Then, then you have to put determinant of A equal to one or minus one. That will have two different components. Okay. The space GL and C. What is the space? It is now subspace, open subspace of the Euclidean space. Is connected for all n greater than equal to one. GL one starts with. so just a temporary short notation gn depends upon n right so i am going to prove this inductively so let us first prove c uh, g1 g1 is just c star what is determinant of a one cross one matrix it's just the element itself and that should not be zero so it's just c star which is c minus 0 okay we know that c minus 0 is connected dropping out a finitely many points from r2 r3 rn they are all connected that we have seen already okay so now assume that the result is true for n minus 1 and n is greater than equal to 2 that means gn minus 1 is connected we are assuming okay now let us use this symbol en to this column this is a column vector 0 0 0 1 inside c power n so to write a column vector i will 0 0 0 and put a transpose here let's solve consider the map phi from n cross n matrices to c power n given by phi of a equal to a operating upon e n what does it give you it will give you the last column of this matrix a okay this formula is nothing but the last column of the matrix a writing the last column you know is a bunch of coordinate functions it's one of the coordinate functions so therefore phi is open surjective mapping right this is an open surjective mapping but we are not interested in the whole space here we are interested in only an open subset of that gl and c okay so so all this i have told you that it is just a quotient map here because it is a projection map to the last n columns okay in particular p is an open mapping now gl and c is an open subset of m so it follows that phi restricted to gn is also an open mapping but what is the image if you take a non zero if you take a invertible matrix that is determinant of a is not equal to zero each column is a non zero vector that is a minimum thing therefore the last column which is a of n it's a non zero vector 
therefore the value is taking inside c minus c n minus 0 0 0 so i will write it as c n star what we want to say is that this is also surjective namely from g l n c namely g n to c n star so this is surjective is what i want to say why take a non zero vector inside c n use your linear algebra to complete it to a what a basis how many elements will be there in the basis exactly n elements the first vector you write it as the last one v is is equal to the last vector then write the other n minus 1 vectors, column vectors, they are all treated them as column vectors. You will get an n cross n matrix. That matrix, because each column together they span the whole thing, so that must be a basis. This is what you have assumed. So the, deter the matrix will be invertible. Determinant is not equal to 0 which is the same thing as a matrix invertible. So what we have got is an element A inside Gn whose nth column is V. It just means that if you take phi of A, it's V. Therefore, phi restricted to Gn to Cn star is surjective. We are exactly in the situation of theorem 3.34 that we have just proved, right? It's a surjective open mapping, so it's a quotient map. Cn star, what is it? Cn cross Cn cross Cn, so sorry, sorry, C cross C cross C minus 0, 0, 0, which we know is connected. What are the fibers of this field? If we show they are connected, then you are in a good shape, you can immediately conclude that Gn is connected by this theorem. Okay. Therefore, what we need to show is that each fiber here, phi, in, phi inverse of V, this is connected. By definition, what is phi inverse of V? All those n cross n matrices inside Gn, such that when evaluated in the last on En, which is the last column, will be equal to V. This V is fixed. Right? First thing I want to show is that all the fibers are homeomorphic to each other. What is the idea? Finally, I want to prove that they are connected, right? So if I prove one of them is connected, all others will be connected. So let me prove that they are homeomorphic to each other, which is much easier to prove. So what you have to do, start with any non-zero vector, choose A in Gn, this we have done earlier, such that A of En equal to V, because we know this is surjective map. Okay. It then follows that the left multiplication by A defines a homeomorphism. Take an element here, multiply it by A on the left. What is the inverse map? Multiply by A inverse. So, this is a homeomorphism of the whole space to itself, GLN to G, GN to GN. But I want to say that this fiber goes to that fiber. What is an element of this fiber? All those B such that B of EN equal to EN. What is this one? All those say B prime, such that B prime of EN is equal to V, right? So if you take an element such here, B, A times B will have this property and converse. Okay. So homeomorphism is very easy to verify here. Now comes, I have to just prove that one of the fibers, namely phi nose of E n, this is connected. You can see why I have done this one in the next step. Why the choice of En is, is done here? Namely, this allows us to apply the induction. The induction hypothesis. 
Okay. So the claim is that phi inverse of En is is connected. So, but what is it? Is, I am just repeating it here. What is it? All those B in Gn, B of En is En. This is the definition. I want to say that this thing is homeomorphic to Gn minus 1 cross Cn minus 1. Suppose I have proved this one, then the theorem is over. Okay, this was the only thing that was needed. Once one fiber is uh, connected, all the fibers are connected. So I can apply the previous theorem to conclude that Gn is connected. Along with the induction hypothesis, it follows that Gn is connected. So all that I have to prove is that this set, this space is homeomorphic to this space. Look at what happens. B is in phi inverse of En means the last column is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So this B has the last column. This is a big 0. This is a block matrix, by the way. This is n minus 1 cross n minus 1. This is n minus 1 cross 1. This is 1 cross n minus 1. And this is 1 cross 1. It's a block matrix. Okay. So this whole column is just 0, 0, 0, 1. That is the meaning of that it is En, right? This is some block B1, which is an n minus 1 cross n minus 1 matrix. And this is another just row here, u and u to u and u and maybe some z1, z2, zn, whatever, zn minus 1. Okay. So every B which has this form, namely inside phi of En, has this form. But Determinant of this one is nothing but determinant of B1 times 1. Therefore, this must be non-zero. The moment this is non-zero, it is an element of Gn minus 1. And what is this one? This is just an element of Cn minus 1. Projection map here is to first n minus 1 coordinates here, n minus 1 cross n minus 1 coordinates. That is continuous. Projection to these coordinates also continuous. So, breaking B into two parts like B1, comma U, that is a continuous function. This is what I am putting here. The, the complement, I mean the, the inverse is also continuous from the whole thing to this one. Therefore, this becomes a homeomorphism. This completes proof that GNC is connected. Okay. So here, little bit, little bit, little bit of many interesting topology is involved here. Okay, so the method employed here is educative again. Not only the information that you have got now that GLNC is connected. Okay, if you have learned this proof nicely. It will help you in long way for many other things. Now I will go to another important thing here. Okay, this time I may take a little more time. The topology sine curve. Remember, I wanted you to. I want to. Uh, I promise that I will show you why the closure of a path connected that may not be path connected. That is what we are coming to here. This example will serve that purpose, but pay attention to this example because it will serve as a many, many counter examples for us. Okay. For us as well as for other people also. So this thing, something you have to study properly. What is it? What is the sine curve is going to do? It is starting with the graph of a sine function. Only thing is, instead of sine x, we are taking sine pi by x. The x is inverted here. Therefore, the domain should, should exclude 0. At 0, it is not defined. So I don't want to take 0 to infinity. I just take 0 to 1. That is enough for me. You can take 0 to infinity for other purpose. 0 excluded. 1 close, no problem. Take the function sine pi by x 
and look at its graph. The graph is x comma sine pi by x, points like that, which will be subset for R2. Okay, so the whole topology sine curve is going to be subset of R2. Okay, you can just look at this uh, curve, but now we want to do something more here, namely, we want to put the y axis part between minus and plus 1. So, 0 comma y between minus 1 and plus 1. This is the lines, closed line segment. Okay, lying and on the y axis, 0 comma y. So, you take the union of this sine curve, namely the graph of sine, sine pi by x, union with b. That is my x. Okay. So, this is by definition the topology is a sine curve. Okay. Being the graph of a function, continuous function defined on an open or on some interval which is connected. Okay. So, the graph A is connected. Actually, it's path connected. The whole thing is a path. It's also path connected. All right. So, A is connected. A bar is the whole of X. So, this is what one has to see it here. I will show you the diagram here. Then it will be very clear to you. So, X is connected. A is actually path connected. But I am not going to use that. Just connectivity is enough to conclude that X is connected. Let us look at this curve. So, this is the sine curve. This is 1, that is 0. At 0, it is not defined. But what happens to this? This is 1 by 2. Okay, this is not 1 by 2. This is what? Uh, yeah, 2, 1 by 2, see pi x by pi. So, the, yeah. So, so you see for, let me see, this pi by x is there, right? Put x equal to 1 by 2, then sine 2 pi you get. That is 0. Okay, like this. So, so at all these 1 by n or 2 by n, 4 by n and so on, it will take either this point or this point or this point or this point or this point. Depends upon even and odd. So, it will keep going like this. This part is B, this line segment on the y axis. This is the y axis from minus 1 to plus 1. All the, the entire curve is between this y equal to minus 1 to y equal to plus 1 in that strip. Because sin x doesn't take values other than minus 1 to plus 1 in, in the interval minus 1 plus 1. So, this is like. So, now look at any point here. There are all these points coming closer and closer to this point. So, every point on the y axis from minus 1 to plus 1 is in the closure of this A. This is A. Therefore, A bar is the whole of x. Is that clear? So, every point on the y axis from minus 1 to plus 1 is a closure point of this A. Therefore, our theorem says that this space is connected. A itself is path connected because it is actually it itself is a path. Okay, except that in the definition of path, you must have a closed interval. So, we do not have a closed interval. So, what you do, suppose you take a point here, from any other point here to any other point here, you can take the restriction of the function sin pi by x, that will give you a path here. So, this is path connected is all right. Okay. So, since a bar is x, follows that a is not closed. Okay. Of course, it is easily seen that b being a uh, line segment that is closed. Okay. We claim that both A and B are path components of X. That will show that X is not connected. 
X is not path connected. Okay. So this is the final thing we want to prove that A and B are both path components. They are path connected because one is a closed interval, homeomorphic to a closed interval. Other one is the image of, of a continuous function defined on an, op, an, uh, on an interval. Open, uh, one, one side open, other side closed. No matter, it is an interval. Okay. So, what we have to show is that take any point on the B part and any point on the A part. Two points you take, show that there is no path from one to the other. Okay. That will show that these two are what? Path components. See, if you have taken A, what you have to do bigger than A, you have to take a point of B. So you must be able to join a point of B to a point of A. So I say there is no such path. Okay. So if I prove this, what the claim that A and B are path components follows. Therefore, X is not path connected. They are exactly two path components. Suppose you have a path. Path means now what? Some continuous function defined on a closed interval. I can change the closed interval to any 0, 1. There is no problem. Okay, by a reparameterization. So you can assume that there is a path from uh, 0, 1 to x such that omega 0 is inside B and omega 1 is inside A. Okay. So remember X is subspace of R, R2. Okay. Look at the projection map R2 to R, the X axis, X, you know, X projection, first projection, X, Y going to X. Then pi composite omega 0, this is what? This is the X coordinate of omega 0. Omega 0 is inside B. So the X coordinate will be 0 because the whole of B is just 0 cross minus 1 plus 1. Okay. So omega pi of omega 0 is 0. Pi of omega 1 will be something on the X axis between open interval 0 to 1. So it is positive. Of course, it is less than 1, less than or equal to 1. But it is not equal to 1, it is some positive number. Okay. By intermediate value theorem, see this map is from where? From x to r. Okay. So the codomain is r. So intermediate value theorem for this map 0, 1 to r. Okay. Not from x to r. But I have taken 0, 1 to x and then compose it with pi. So 0, 1 to r. It follows that for every k inside n, there exists a tk belong to 0, 1 by k. Okay. Why I want to take this one? Because I want to make this tk convert to 0 as k tends to infinity. That is why I have made this one. But these points are where there is some point here. So what is the statement? Statement is look at omega 0, that pi composite omega 0 and pi composite omega 1 by k. Between these two, there must be some point. Take that point conveniently. Tk will go to that point. That is an intermediate theorem. So such that pi of omega Tk is equal to this point, 2 divided by some 2nk plus 1. Okay. All that I want to say is, Look at omega 0 is 0 and omega 1 by k instead of omega 1 here, sorry, pi of omega of 1 by k is some positive number. Okay, between them there will be a point like this. So that's what I want to say. So it can be that both of them are 0 and this I have to choose is that is not possible. That is a point. So 2 divided by you know 2n plus k. This is in, this is some integer, this is odd integer, is what I want. 2n plus 1. 
2 divided 2 n plus 1 for some n k inside n. Okay. Once you have chosen this way, what happens is omega t k will be what? Its x coordinate is this point. So I have to write the x coordinate here. Once x coordinate is written, this omega t k is some point inside the graph, right? So it will look like this. Okay. See, what I am try trying to do is, if the point is already on the x, uh, y axis, I, I throw them out. After all, the, the curve starts from omega 0 and omega 1. So between them, you have lots of parts of this of path A, this the, the graph of A. So it must be somewhere in this graph. That's what I want. In other words, all these points, See, this point is the uh, omega 1, right? Pi composite omega 1 or something here, doesn't matter. Now, when you come here, this must be, because intermediate value theorem, it must be omega of something. This must be omega of something. This must be omega of something. Because they are all, once I have chosen this one, the point must be between these two. Point must be between these two, like this. I keep choosing them closer and closer. That is the whole idea. Okay. So, once you have chosen that way, this will be sine of pi divided by this number. Pi divided by this number 2nk plus 1 by 2. Okay. So, what is sine of this one? It will be plus minus 1. Okay. And x coordinate is this one. So, that is precisely what I have been pointing out. x coordinate will be somewhere here or here or between these two points and y coordinate will be precisely that. The x coordinate will be somewhere here, the y coordinate will be that. This, that, this, that, doesn't matter, all of them may be this point, <laughs> okay. But I will always choose something after that here, one here, which I can always choose them alternatively. That is why I have taken it as odd numbers. All these things must be there. All that happens is by continuity, if you take the limit of this one, it must convert to some point in B. What is that point? Actually, it must be omega 0, this, this 0 it must be. Right? Omega 0 is 0, okay? 0, 0. Omega 0 is 0. The It must come to that one because this goes to 0. But this point is plus minus one, plus minus one. This is not a convergent sequence. So this contradicts the continuity of omega. So it proves that there is no path. All right. So this proves that this theorem 3.29, namely the closure of a path connected space is connected. That is not true. Closure of a connected space is connected. If you want to put path connectivity, it is not true. It is not valid for path connected space. Okay. Let us show that this same example gives you a counter example for this also for path connectivity. Okay. So it, is, it doesn't take much time. So we show that one also. Now put x equal to the topology sine curve and y equal to the closed interval 0, 1 and f from x to y, the surjection, projection map to the x coordinate, which is a quotient map which we know because it is surjective open mapping to begin with, restricted to x also, it is surjective, all that I have to say, that's all. Okay, we know that x is not path connected. Right? But y is path connected. Y is just 0, 1. Okay. What happens to the fibers? The fibers of F0 take any point between F inverse of 0 is nothing but, sorry, F inverse of 0 is nothing but the B, the, the component B, 0 cross minus 1 plus 1. So this is path connected. What is f inverse of any other point x where x is not equal to 0? Look at this picture. 
there the only part is the sin curve which is a graph the graph means for each point there is only one point here each point there is only one point what is it x comma sin pi by x therefore the inverse image under the projection is precisely one point here the fibers of each point between 0 open to 1 there are only one points so they are also path connected so the hypothesis is satisfied everything is satisfied yet the conclusion is wrong okay conclusion says that <laughs> this is path connected but that is wrong therefore the theorem is not valid for path connectivity okay okay so this example this example you know has a very peculiar property you take a small neighborhood of this point on the y axis here make a small neighborhood then look at the intersection of this entire thing there it will have lots of segments of this curve infinitely many of them they are all disjoint with each other every point every point on the y axis every neighborhood no matter how small the neighborhood is has this property it is union of all segments disjoint first segment will be on the x axis that is a straight line but otherwise all other segments are part of this sin curve right so this phenomena we want to study and make it into a property namely locally disconnectivity or locally connectivity that will be the next topic we will do it next time thank you